Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to cover some of the available options for data binding with ng-model. As we know, whenever we apply ng-model to a form control, ng-model is going to track the value of the field and it's also going to define its validity state. The value of the field is made available here to the parent ng-form directive and we can also access it directly. So we can export the ng-model directive in a given input control, we can assign it to a template variable and we can access here the value using email.value and the email validity state using the email.valid flag. Now the question here is what if we would like to set some initial value to the form? Let's see how can we do that. We're going to switch here to our login component and let's go ahead and let's add here an object containing the initial form values. Let's call this form value object simply val and let's define it as having two properties. So the first property is going to be the email and the second property is going to be the password and let's set in here a valid value to the password. This object contains now the initial values of each of the fields of the form. We can now use these values and set them as the initial values of our form fields using the following template syntax. So we are going to go to the ng-model directive and instead of applying it here simply to the field, we are going to apply it with the Angular input template syntax. So this is the syntax that we use in order to write a value to an input property, either of an HTML element or of a custom Angular component, the square brackets syntax. We're going to be accessing here our val property and we're going to access the value email. And we're going to do the exact same thing here for the password. Let's use the template input variable syntax. Let's access val and let's fill in the value password. Let's have a look at this form in action to see if everything happens as we would expect. So if we switch here to a larger window and we refresh the page, we are going to see that the values of the form are pre-filled as expected. And we can see here in the printed form value that indeed the values are correctly set. But now the question is, what happens if we start typing here and editing these fields? Will these get reflected on the val object? Let's have a look. We're going to switch back to our code and we are going to here in our login method, whenever the form gets submitted, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add an extra console log statement. And here we're going to be logging the value of the val object. Let's go ahead and print it out. If we now try this out and we start editing here the value of the email field and let's also modify here the value of the password, we can see that the new values that we are typing in are getting reflected here on the form.value property. But now if we click here on login and we submit the form, we are going to see that the value of the val property remained unchanged. So whenever we type in in our form, that is not going to get reflected here in our val object. The val object, which contains the form initial value, will remain unchanged. So what we see here is an example of unidirectional data binding. In this example, we took some data that was available at the level of the component, in this case, the val object, and we have assigned some of these values to the form. But the form has no way of assigning any modified values back to the val object. So the binding goes in one way from the initial form values into the form, but not the other way back. So we can also activate, if we choose to, bidirectional data binding. In that case, whenever we type in here new values on the form fields, those values will be available not only via the form value property, but they will also be available directive in the val object. That is known as bidirectional data binding. The data goes both ways from the component into the template and from the template into the component. Let's see this in action. Going back here to our program, we're going to go to our login component 
template and we're going to apply the following syntax. So not only are we assigning the initial value here to the email field, but we are also getting new values back from ng model and assigning them back here to the email property of val. And we can set that up using this syntax here. In this example, we are combining both the syntax for subscribing to an event and for assigning a property. Let's go ahead and let's apply the same syntax here to the password property as well. Remember that when you are trying to apply this syntax, the square brackets need to come first. The square brackets should encapsulate the normal brackets. If you want a mnemonic to help you remember of what to apply first, you can think of the phrase box of bananas. So this is the box inside the square brackets and these are the bananas, the round parentheses. Let's have a look at this bidirectional data binding syntax in action. So we have switched here to a larger window and we can see that the initial form values are still set just like before. The new values are getting reflected here on the form value property. But now if we submit the form and we inspect here the new value of the val object, we can see that now the email and password properties are reflecting the latest values of the form. So we can see that bidirectional data binding is working correctly as expected. So what does bidirectional data binding exactly mean? How does this work? This means that any changes that we make to the val property in our login component are going to get immediately reflected in the view, in our form. On the other hand, if we change the data at the level of our form, those changes are going to get immediately reflected in our component automatically. The Angular framework is going to take care of that data synchronization operation. We don't have to keep the val object manually in sync with the form values. We don't have to extract the form values whenever we need them, when we push here on the login button that is taken care of automatically by Angular. This syntax is especially useful if you are migrating old applications from AngularJS into Angular. So AngularJS was the previous version of the Angular framework. It also had an ng-model directive that used bidirectional data binding. So if you are migrating forms from AngularJS to Angular, this bidirectional data binding syntax in Angular here, this syntax with the square brackets and the round brackets is especially useful for migrating old AngularJS forms. In general, I tend not to use this syntax and instead I prefer to simply access the ng form directive and from there I can pass in the value of the form whenever I submit it using login form dot value. But if you prefer to use bidirectional data binding, you can also do it. It's up to you. We have several ways of doing the same thing. So here I'm going to leave the final version of this form using one way data binding only and the login method is grabbing the completed form value here from the login form. And with this, you are now aware of all the options that you have available when using template-driven forms and ng-model. Still on the topic of template-driven forms, we are now going to cover how to create our own custom validators, such as min length, max length, required email, etc., in template-driven forms. We are also going to show how to display only one error message per form input field in case that the form field falls into the situation where there are multiple errors applied to it. This is coming right up in the next few lessons.